Hello everyone and welcome to episode 18 of SSTO Space Program. Today we will finish construction of a Duna vessel and start outfitting it for a trip to Duna. We will also launch a very high-tech spaceship to EVE that will probably blow your mind in terms of Delta V. So let's jump right into it. As you probably remember from the last episode of our series, our Duna ship now has docking ports, so we can start sending supply ships to resupply it with material kits and fuel. This SSTO that we are sending right now is the same tanker SSTO that we sent uh, that we are sending to refuel um, Kerbin cargo terminal, but this time instead of fuel, it's carrying material kits, 75,000 units of it to be exact. We need to send at least three or four vessels like this to fully restock and uh, activate all the modules on our Duna ship. This launch is pretty much the same as all the launches of this kind and I am actually enjoying using a standardized vessel for this trip. As I said, this SSTO can be easily modified for different types of cargo that you want to put in orbit and has a cargo capability of 100 tons to low curb in orbit. Our Duna ship is currently sitting at a uh, roughly circular orbit around Kerbin at 100 km altitude and this SSTO should have absolutely no problem getting there. We are obviously tracking this mission to benefit from Routine Mission Manager that uh, will allow us to fly this mission automatically once the mission that we are flying right now is completed. I, I know that I've said it multiple times before, but actually this mod, as you will see later in the video, allowed us to finish the construction of this ship and uh, especially the resupplying part with almost no effort and uh, I honestly did not expect but when I built the Duna vessel and I um, looked at its size and mass I was I was kind of like a bit downtrodden by uh, by the sheer size and difficulty that it would pose to to launch this ship in a fully stock game and um, the fact that we've managed to do it is mainly due to um, routine mission manager I would say because we were able to launch the ship empty which reduced its um, mass quite a lot actually by a factor of five and then uh, the all the resupplying and refueling part will be done pretty much automatically and um, you know to, to fully refuel the ship uh, it's not yet ready but you will see that later to fully refuel the ship will need to launch I think 10 or 20 I don't even know how many a lot uh, of the smaller uh, tanker SSTOs and um, to fill all tanks to full let's um, let's put it this way I'm not flying 20 missions uh, just to refuel one ship okay I mean it would look cool to launch a very big ship like this with a m massive base to Duna but I, <laughs> I am not doing I'm not flying the resupplying missions on my own manually. So yes, so uh, thanks to this mod, uh, we were able to do it in a stock game without cheating, which is great. And um, as you see, this SSTO has um, four nuclear engines for orbital maneuvering, which is pretty useful because it gives us uh, quite a lot of Delta V for um, all the rendezvous maneuvers and so on. And to store material kits, I chose those round container tanks introduced by, I believe, Freight Transportations Technologies mod, mainly because they are small, relatively small, so we could uh, easily stack them together to get the mass of the payload that we wanted to. Because the big tanks um, introduced by the same mod, I believe, have only four sizes, and um, the, the biggest one was a little bit too big, the smaller one was a little bit too small, plus those are white and match pretty well the, uh, the color of the SSTO. As you can see we docked no problem and uh, all the tracking was completed and then I wanted to uh, track the return mission as well and that also went pretty well apart from the landing <laughs> it was horrible <laughs> but well you know nothing exploded so I guess you can call that a success. And once this is done we can start ordering resupply missions on our Duna ship and see how easy it is. You just click matching docking port, in our case it would be large docking port, you select the mission you want to, you click procure and then you just have to wait one day and the ship will be there automatically. Awesome, amazing. I just cannot express how much I like this idea. It's so cool, so cool. But it also has other benefits like now we can focus on doing the more interesting stuff which is launching the front and the final section of our ship actually. So yes, this, this um, part of the ship weighs um, a little bit over 280 tons if I remember correctly. We are sending all the fertilizer and supplies uh, with us already but no fuel as usual and uh, some of the modules that are on this section are also not deployed, uh, mainly the rotating habitat. We will deploy it once our Kerbals get uh, 
that will cost us some material kits to do so but with the resupplying mission for the material kits that's not a problem really uh, we can just order one more mission do it and then uh, you know be done with it it's so cool so yeah as you can see um the launch was pretty standard we used one of our standard large payload uh, rocket as STOs to do that I used those honey budget control modules to control the ship I have also installed a very large probe core on the uh, ship's front that will serve as a ship's computer because this very large probe core actually can uh, serve as a um, control station or a control point let's call it that way for um, all the probes and uh, you know rovers and so on which is cool because you don't actually need to have a connection to KC now to control your probes provided that you have this probe core and uh, enough kerbals on your ship so you know that will be like a mobile base of operations one thing that uh, you might have noticed that I completely forgot about uh, is that this ship has no antennas yet. So, <laughs> so we'll have to send another mission uh, with, a, with an engineer that will install some uh, long-range antennas on our ship because um, that's a um, rather grave oversight from my part. But yes, as you saw, we just docked our ship, no problem, when that was docked, I uh, compressed all the construction ports I must say that uh, even with my uh, bad attitude and uh, lack of alignment in docking, I must admit that the ship uh, looks pretty nice. It's uh, rather okay and no glaring flaws in it. And uh, yes, it's completed. It's pretty hard to believe, to be honest. I uh, Well, I sort of was expecting that uh, this would eventually come to be, but um, I wasn't expecting this to be that easy. It felt easier than launching Flame Leviathan, to be honest but it's also empty but yeah but we can uh, we can resupply it and refuel it no problem so the next part of uh, our mission for today will be obviously sending a resupply missions for the liquid fuel and to do that we will of course send down our standard SSTO tanker this time with a tank fitted for liquid fuel only so we will send 20,000 units of liquid fuel with that tanker and uh, since this mission is pretty much the same as the missions, uh, as all the resupply and the refueling mission that you saw before, uh, we also were tracking that mission and there's little to talk about that. Apart from that, it went well, uh, we reached orbit no problem and we were docking during a solar eclipse. Because why not? Solar eclipses are always cool and there was one recently in the United States. I envy you so much that here in Europe we couldn't see it. But nevertheless we've managed to do it. The docking was completed, the tracking was done as well and our ship landed no problem on the runway. So this time at least I landed in, in a uh, much more controlled and um, nicer way and I also did not forget to put parachutes on the vessel so we could stop easily. Now we can just start ordering our missions and just look at this picture. Our vessel in orbit with two supply ships full of material kits docked to it. Looks amazing. It's even cooler when you think about that. It was done with um, pretty much no effort on your side and still um, 150,000 uh, units of material kits just got there with uh, little to no input from your side. Amazing. What I also like in this picture is actually it looks um, industrial. I don't know looks cool anyway so once the ships are docked automatically the only thing that you need to do is click on the docking port on the ship click commence return and just wait for your ship to land safely on Kerbin and here is the same story with the uh, tanker SSTOs with liquid fuel I really have nothing to say about this apart from that I really like this uh, this scene so I wanted to share it with you <laughs> and I hope that you like it too I also haven't forgotten about the sick kerbals we had in orbit that you wanted to bring back to Kerbin, as a majority of you expressed in the comments under my last video. So, as you see, uh, after undocking, all of the up timers uh, for those sick kerbals were reset to their initial value, but not the home timers, and they still remain tourists. So, I think that something is either broken or we are doing something wrong, I don't know. Now, we are going back to Kerbin. And as you can see, uh, we had a very unexperienced pilot piloting this ambulance and that um, probably was playing a little bit too much Elite Dangerous and was thinking that uh, spaceships behave like um, fighter jets in space, which is obviously not true. But uh, I tried convincing her that it's not the case, but that did not work. Anyway, as you see, our um, ambulance SSTO has still plenty of fuel left, so landing back on Kerbin won't be a problem in any way shape or form 
and actually to have a little bit more fun during this mission, I decided that uh, we'll try to land this ambulance without any UI. Just uh, enjoy the view throughout the flight. And uh, since this vessel is very stable, has excess fuel, that was relatively easy. Yeah, there's little to say about that. Uh, well, apart from maybe that uh, when we reach 25 kilometers altitude above Kerbin's surface, obviously the home timers for our Kerbals were reset as well. And upon landing, we recovered them as a fully operational and ready for service Kerbonat. Meanwhile, on Duna, our robotic rover Endurance has reached another destination. And I would like to thank you all very much for sending all your suggestions that you've sent under my last video and via Twitter. And it looks like the prevalent opinion for our, the ultimate goal, I would say, for our rover would be to go to the poles. Uh, right now we are really close to the equator, so it's pretty far away. And since uh, some of you suggested that we should go through Midlands Canyon and Northern Shelf, this is what we'll do. Um, we'll also try to stumble upon a couple of anomalies on the way and also explore a bunch of polar craters if we get the chance. So as usual, we sent all the data to Duna Research Station and uh, kept a backup copy in the experiment storage unit that probably will be recovered at some point later. I've also noticed that um, in the Midlands Canyon, a little bit further to northeast, there is an anomaly that I haven't discovered as well. So I wanted to figure out how close we can get, because it's very close to the trajectory that we'll have to pick anyway to go to Northern Shelf. So if we can go and explore it as well, we should do it. Upon transferring to 1.3, I thought initially that the sandstorms on Duna maybe are um, gone or maybe they just... Uh, are a little bit less severe but uh, now I see that I was just lucky and I must say that I absolutely love this effect of sandstorms on Duna looks amazing it's a bit too gloomy maybe sometimes but on the other hand it looks so awesome I like it so much looks like a dangerous place really cool Speaking of dangerous places Eve is uh, probably far more dangerous than Duna will ever be and uh, it so happens uh, that uh, we are almost at transfer window to EVE. So I thought that maybe we should send a um, smaller mission to EVE as well. But, um, you know, stock SSTOs to EVE and back without refueling are not possible. Let's, uh, let's get that out of the way already. Uh, if you want to see what kind of missions can be done using stock means to EVE and back, then I would suggest watching uh, either Bradley Withstands or uh, Stratzen Blitz uh, 75. They, um, They've made a lot of uh, very cool missions to EVE, reusable missions to EVE, and um, be it with uh, or without refueling. And uh, yes, that's pretty much the top quality of you can get while going to EVE. I decided that we should actually try a different approach. And uh, since we have a lot of mods installed, one of the mods that we have installed and uh, we've been using so far, but uh, only parts of it, is called Freight Transportation Technologies and this mod not only adds a lot of containers for different types of fuel, different types of materials that you can carry, it also adds specialized engines and um, one of the engine types that it adds has been recently buffed. It runs on Carborandum. If you are familiar with MKS and the Rover Dude suite of mods you probably have heard about this. Carborandum is a very rare material. It's extremely hard to get. You can get it only from the atmosphere of the sun, surface of EVE or uh, ELU. In stock game of course. Uh. And yes, there is a... Um, those are the only places where you can find carborandum. It's also extremely expensive. So freight transportation technologies actually adds a lot of engines that run on carborandum. And um, it's extremely expensive to buy it if you want to buy it. And uh, I also heard that some people were saying that it's actually impossible to fill it up in VAB. Well, I could, so I don't know where that information comes from. But anyway, it's very expensive. And those engines that run on carborandum are even more expensive and um, one of those engine types that is designed to push freighters actually has been buffed recently to a uh, I would say quite insane numbers <laughs> um, yeah the engine ISP is now over 20,000 seconds and uh, by comparison the most efficient stock engine the ion engine has only 4,000 seconds ISP so you imagine how powerful this engine is and also it does not suffer from atmospheric effects so it's almost as efficient and and, uh, as powerful on the surface of Kerbin as it is in space. So it quickly became apparent to me that using those engines you can make spaceships that uh, do not feel like rockets. Um, 
they would feel more like something straight out of Star Wars or Elite Dangerous, at least when uh, you are traveling around the system. And uh, I quickly devised a, well maybe not quickly, but uh, I devised a spaceship that has um, around 300,000 meters per second delta V, but we don't have enough money to fully fuel it, so we'll fuel it only to the point where it will have 200,000 meters per second delta V. Or maybe even more, it's difficult to say, to be honest, because it also consumes water. We are not carrying all the water with us, because water is very easy to get, so uh, we'll refuel water once we get to EVE. So, you see, the point uh, why I wanted to conduct this test um, is... Um, a, because it's not possible to make a reliable stock SSTO to EVE, and, uh, you know, going to EVE is not hard, it's just tedious. But um, with that amount of Delta V available, what would be possible to do is using brachistochrone trajectories. And uh, those trajectories, if you're not familiar with them, are not the trajectories that you normally follow when you want to use the least energy spent. You can use those trajectories when you don't really care about the energy efficiency. You just want to get somewhere in a shortest amount of time possible. And I must say that um, it looks to me that this vessel could be very close to actually being able to go to any, to maybe not to any, but to nearest bodies using this kind of approach. It has 1G acceleration when in space, that doesn't really change that much once uh, the fuel is burned. Because with such efficient engines, actually what constitutes the bulk of your mass is your payload and not your fuel, which is also much different from what we are usually used to. And uh, yes, with 1G acceleration, you don't really have to worry about artificial gravity, so it's kind of like uh, the spaceships from the Expanse. Anyway, I find this idea very interesting and I wanted to try it out. And uh, yes, we have this spaceship that uses parts from FTT and some other um, USI related mods. Has living quarters for four kerbals, uh, a lot of science laboratories, you know, a lot of converts, everything actually to keep them happy. And uh, yes, we are going to send it to EVE. Mm. I didn't trust my calculations to the point where I actually wanted to use Brachistochrone trajectory to go to EVE, but nevertheless I decided that we are going to cut the transit time to only 80 days. and. Um, our goal is not only landing on EVE, but also going back to Kerbin before Duna launch window occurs. So we are sending Valentina and two other Kerbinats. They have a surface reconnaissance vehicle in their cargo bay called Roach and a small orbiter that will put her on EVE. This spaceship, because I don't really think that you can call it an SSTO. It still is an SSTO, but it's kind of much more than that as well. Also carries a, um, a lander that is very loosely based on Venera uh, landers that were sent to Venus, because I wanted to talk a little bit about that in the future video. And yes, as you can see, after executing the burn, it will get to EVE in just over 80 days. And I'm really curious how it will turn out, because EVE is a very difficult place to get from, not to, but from. And um, it's also very hot and very attractive, I would say, so it looked like a very good testing ground for this SSTO. Uh, just a, a side note, this spaceship's price was uh, 32 million credits, so it's all our budget. So um, we can't really afford crushing it. Well, anyway, that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed. If you enjoyed, please consider liking this video. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Mark Frem, and I will see you next time. Bye.